Good morning everyone and thanks for joining me. I'm setting off again after a two days layover. So I'm now underway again. I'm heading towards Atherstone where I have 11 locks to deal with today. When I've dealt with all the locks I'll then moor up and finish. What's on the door there? Lock number four. Say door, I mean gate. Thank you very much. Hi, and thanks for joining me. Using my Nicholson's Waterways Guide number 3, I'm going to explain the extent of today's episode. In the last episode, I went through the first four locks at Atherstone. There are seven more locks to do, and in this episode, I start with lock 5, and I pass through the remaining seven locks, and I eventually moor up just beyond bottom lock 11. boat coming towards me and I can see someone is in the next lock. Thanks for your help there. The boat in the lock is coming towards me. Lock 5 have just come out of, 5 of 11, so nearly halfway there. I'm just passing the pub here, the King's Head. Going under quite a wide road bridge, complete with graffiti. Many thanks for your help. Cheers. Did the boat go down when you came out? Uh, there's another one coming up. Oh, is there? Thanks. <laughs> this is Badsley Wharf moorings. There's a boat in lock 7 and there's a boat coming up behind it and they'll need to wait for me to go through the lock so hopefully they'll give me some assistance. So we're getting on very well with these locks I have to say. I'm very pleased with how it's all going. That looks quite a sizeable boat. Makes you wonder how it got there. Thank you very much. Great. Right. It does very much so. It's been quite quick for me coming down through here. Yeah. That lock seven that I'm leaving now, my lock angels. just make my way into lock 7. Doesn't look as though there's a boat wanting to come up. That 
that means I'll have to do the work myself. pond here. All the locks have had them. This gate moves fairly easily. This is lock 8 and I'm just exiting. I've got to moor up and shut the gates. A bit of a nuisance, but uh, to do 8 locks, and it's the first time I've had to stop and come back. That's not bad. You can just see lock 8 in the background. I walked forward to get this lock ready. Just going back to collect the boat. <laughs> it's all go, isn't it? But I'm very pleased with how I'm getting on. Very pleased indeed. Just going into lock 9 making my way there I should say. That may look like three but it's actually nine. I'm actually going to try something different leaving this lock because there are steps down either side. <coughs> I'm losing my voice. <laughs> there are steps down either side and I think it might be possible to stop the boat, step off one side, shut the gate, cross the boat, get on the other side and then shut that gate without needing to moor up. So I'm going to give that a go. Steps there, steps here. I'm going to see if what I suggested is actually going to work. Take it gently going out of here. I don't want to go too fast because I want the boat to stop.
but I thought that worked very well other than I didn't have one of the cameras running which is a bit of a shame but anyway yeah <laughs> I see quite a gap at the bottom of these gates. These are the steps here. And on that side, you get a better view of them now. There is a boat coming my way, which could mean the next lock is set for me. That means it's already full of water. But it's possible there was another boat there and went down. But I don't think that would be the case, given the time that I've spent here. I think all the boats ahead of me, and I think there was only one boat ahead of me, would have cleared. Very easy, because there's a moored boat in front of me. Two more locks to do, then I'm going to be mooring up for the day. The time now is uh, 1.35. <laughs> when I finish cruising, I'll let you know what the time is, <laughs> if I think of it. I'm getting help with lock 10, so I'll soon be out of this and into my final lock, lock 11. It's going down very nicely, I have to say. Sometimes the boat gets pulled forward and I put it in reverse to, to keep it back, although some people say the nudge up to the gates is a good thing. But these gates, because they're, because they're two single gates, the way they join, there's sort of like a mitered bit in the middle. It's not a flush, it's more of a V. From my, where I look at it, there's a sort of V there. There's a lot of gates that are mitered so that the V is pointing towards you. I don't know if that makes sense, but... <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, we'll pass on the wrong side, yeah? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Here we go. There is a boat in the lock ahead, which is rising up at the moment. Take it easy because I've got this boat to pass. This is the last of the 11 locks. This boat behind me has just left. The gate is open and I can go straight in. The gate actually doesn't look as though it's fully open. I have to assume it is. Yeah, the gate is fully open. Just didn't look it <laughs> from my angle of approach. <laughs> Number 11. I need this now.
exiting the last lock. I do need to moor up on this occasion to come back and shut the gates. Actually, I've just spotted a bollard down here that one could actually tie to. A bit late now. I think I'm committed to going this side. <laughs> Yes, I should have used this bollard, I think. I didn't spot that before. If you look carefully, you can see I've left my windlass by the lock ladder. I didn't actually think about it until late that evening. I went back in the morning, and needless to say, it had gone. Some of these footballs are rather loose, I've noticed. <laughs> I'm just walking ahead. I see there are more boats on the other side. So it is best to moor along here. Well, I've just looked up ahead and I'm going to moor along here because round the corner <laughs> there's a whole line of more boats on the offside. So if I moor along there it's going to restrict the width. So I'm going to stay along here. That's my plan. <laughs> oh. So how long have I been going? It's ten past two. I think I've been going for five and a half hours. I started at twenty to nine. Yeah, five and a half hours. Anyway, I'll soon be moored up. I'm only moving a couple of hundred yards or meters, one or the other. <laughs> it's nice and open here. It's a bit of a nice place to moor. I made a mental note of where to stop. <laughs> it's very difficult with the hedgerow, it all looks pretty much the same. But there are mooring rings here. So I'll put my centre line on a mooring ring, that's the plan. I'm off. Well, I've managed to get moored using three rings, which is excellent. That doesn't normally happen. They're often spaced out in such a way that you may use one, possibly two. But to actually use three rings is very good. And from where I'm standing, I can see straight down to the next bridge. There is a, there is a bend, but I can see straight down, and that's good. <laughs> I'm pleased about that. So it's a nice open position here. This will suit me for today. I'll be moving on again tomorrow. I can hear a boat coming down through the locks. <laughs> and the railway line is just over there. You can probably hear it. I'm now going to freshen up and make some lunch. I'll catch up with you later. I've decided when I make lunch I'll do the tea separate to the eats 
because if I make my sandwich now <laughs> and talk to you for a little while, my sandwich gets very dry. So I've got a dry throat, so I thought we'd do the tea first as usual. When I'm planning my travels, I use Canal Plan AC, which is an excellent um, piece of software. It works out your day's travel, you can tell it how long you want to travel each day, where you're going from and to, where you want to go via, that sort of thing. And it would do a route plan for you. And it would tell you how long each day's cruising is going to be. I normally set it to four hours. And the reason for that is that for me, four hours, in reality, is normally five or six hours. If you take today as an example, I was roughly where I should have been last night, as it were. And today's cruise, I've finished where it suggests. And it allows 3 hours 50 minutes for that so I wasn't quite in the right place I was a little bit further back so say 4 hours but I'm stopping I'm not going that fast and then I'm stopping and I'm taking my time through the lock so that I can film and this sort of thing so what should have been 4 hours for me has actually been 5 and a half hours and I had tremendous help through the locks if I hadn't had that help <laughs> I'll probably still be going. <laughs> yeah, so you can never tell. And I think using the planner with four hours is quite a good idea. So that's what I tend to do. I'll study later on where I'll be stopping tomorrow. I don't always follow what it suggests, by the way. Sometimes I will do more or less. Normally I'll do more than what it recommends. But it just depends how the day has gone. If you're dealing with locks, obviously you don't know the time it's going to take to go through each lock. So you have to allow for that. Hello. Hi. <laughs> A lovely pop pop you've got there. <laughs> so you, you have to allow for going through locks. If it's a straight cruising day, then the hours are going to be a little bit more accurate to what you might expect. <laughs> I hope this isn't being picked up because of copyright and that sort of thing. It can cause problems when you record the radio. So <laughs> I'm just going to pause for a moment and let that pass on. <laughs> let's, have, let's have some tea while we're waiting. <laughs> So, I am very pleased with how the day has gone. Very pleased indeed. Um, not been through these locks before, didn't know what to expect. I found them quite easy to negotiate, particularly the ones I dealt with by myself. Obviously when you're going down in locks and you're going to retrieve your boat, um, I was climbing down the lock ladder, that gets very slippy. The ladders themselves were very secure, but the railings either side where you step down, some of those were loose, so as you step onto the ladder you feel a bit insecure, <laughs> thinking the whole thing is a bit uh, wobbly, but that wasn't really the case. And as you saw, I tried a different way of coming out the lock and closing the gates, and that worked very well. I was very pleased with that. Um, that's something I'll do more often, if the circumstances suit. They're all different ways of going into and out of locks. You can pull your boat in or pull it out, but the circumstances don't always suit that. And you have to remember that. So, it's tiring, you know. I mean, I don't know what the time is now. I've taken, taken my watch off, but it must be, must be three o'clock, I should think. I started before nine. It's a pretty long day really. Um, I'm stood up all the time. I don't sit down when I'm cruising. I don't mind being stood up. I find it quite comfortable. And the, the time just goes. It really does. So I'm going to say cheerio for now. <laughs> It'll probably be the morning when we catch up, I think. So thanks for watching thus far. Bye for now. I still hear that noise in the background. <laughs> It's terrible, <laughs> what a racket. <laughs>